So, welcome to Not Another Podcast. We're here at Kineticon. Uh, this is 2017. This is Kineticon 15. 15 years. Now, you might notice we have a certain someone here. We have Martin Kleba. 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 It's, okay. It's I, was, I was always worried about messing up that name. And you just like, did. I did. You, you, you can... That's going to cost you $10,000. <laughs> $10,000? Well, you can beat me up like I you did Vinnie Jones. On top of the $5,000 you already paid me to be here. <laughs> you, you can beat me up like you did Vinnie Jones in the cave, so oh, it's, you know... Good one, good just, one. Just knock me out with a friggin' wrench or something like that. I love that guy. <laughs> Vinnie Jones is sweet. I mean, what was, what was that like, actually, working on that show? Uh, well, I love the cave. Um, it had a lot of potential, and, you know, unfortunately, NBC put us up against um, wrestling on Monday nights... CSI on Monday nights, uh, Monday Night Football, and the World Series. So I, I don't know exactly what they were expecting us to pull as far as numbers, but, um, you know, we got canceled after 10 episodes. And then the WB essentially just, you know, well, the Arrow is a comic, but yeah. there's nothing different than the Arrow you know, compared to the cape, except for yeah, the cape it was, was a little more original. Yeah, it was it was so. like a standalone superhero series that had a that had a strong following, right, Joe? Um, there are a lot of fans out there. They're more or less not like diehard comic book fans. They were just fans of the show. It was actually really good. I thought. I thought um, it was great because you know what it was, um, and, and this is what I get a lot of people who come up and they say, uh, "Finally, it was a show that I could sit down with my kid," and it's like. Yeah, it's like the 70s and 80s when I grew up. You sat down and you watched Little House on the Prairie or you sat down and watched, you know, the Tuesday night lineup of Happy Days, Laverne and Shirley, uh, you know, Mork and Mindy. And yeah, Company. unlike most superhero movies, yeah, it, yeah. TV shows, it, it was one you could watch with, with people. With your family, you know, there was yeah. no swearing. It was, you know, you get your, you look forward to every episode. Maybe like the 60s when, I guess, Batman or something was out, you know, back in the day and... You look forward to the next you get, you, get a, you get a few twists here and there, but at the same time, it's all, it's yep. it's all clean fun kind right. of stuff. Right, exactly. So the, the the one thing I I really wanted to ask. So like, I, I looked. I was browsing through your IMDb page. I was checking out some of your, your previous credits. So that's like, how did you wind up really getting tied into the, the film industry? What, what was like your first, like, kind of like thing you got involved with that really connected you to the the current film industry? Wow. Um, I, you know, the first thing I ever did film-wise was actually a, um, I was doing stunts for Hand the Rocks the Cradle, and that was way back in the early 90s. Um, but uh, then, you know, I was working on Broadway for, you know, nine or ten years, and finally I was like, I got to decide if I'm going to stay in New York. You know, I was living out of, I was still living in Detroit, and uh, that's where I was born and raised, and you know, doing the Christmas show at Radio City and then doing a national tour and, like I said, just calling Detroit still home. And finally I was like, well, all the little guys were telling me, ah, you don't want to move to L.A., you know, it's too much competition, you're never going to work. And finally I just said, well, I need to at least try and see, you know. And so I made the move in 2000 and um, first job was actually working at Universal Studios as Elvin of the Chipmunks. Not as a character walking around the park, but as, like, we did six shows a day, you know, little 15-minute minuets or whatever, and where we meet Frankenstein. And I met a couple of stunt guys, and then they're the ones who turned me on to, you know, okay, we know this, that, and the other, and just one thing led to another, and um, worked a couple of films, and boom, Pirates came along, and... yeah. Yeah. So, so like, how how did you wind up falling into that into that role? Did, was it just something that they wanted somebody that would also do their own stunts at the same time, or was it just kind of like a like you knew somebody who kind of like asked you if you were interested in it? Or well, it was it was interesting because I was working on um, uh, a haunted mansion and um, Looney Tunes back in action, and a stunt friend of mine, Tommy Rosales, was working on those too, and and he was like, "Hey, Marty, it's my bad Mexican." Uh, uh, whatever, okay. uh, but anyway, he's like, "Hey, Marty, man, you need to, you need to talk to this George Rugi, who was the stunt coordinator for Pirates." And he's like, "They're gonna be doing a, a movie on Pirates of the Caribbean," and I was like, "Oh, dude, you know, I'm, I'm busy already with Haunted Mansion and whatever." And um, he's like, "No, no, no, you should call him." So I called. I talked to um, the his assistant, which was Tommy was Tommy um, Dupont at the time, and he's like, "Yeah, yeah, no problem. You know, we've got you down now." So I was like, all right. 
And then uh, I had brought a, a friend of mine, or two friends of mine, little guys, were brought in um, to down to Disney for background as you know, part of Jack's crew they were looking at. Mm-hmm. I shouldn't say Jack's crew, but just as pirates. Yeah. And um, I, I offered to drive them down, and I really wasn't even supposed to be on the lot. And because when you don't go to an audition unless you're, you know, asked to come or whatever. So I was down there, and um, they were having people go up, and you had to do, a, like, a monologue or a improv, and they were taking guys up like, by three and four at a time. And the lady who was doing the background, she was like, okay, you're next. I'm like, no, 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 I'm... I'm not here, you know, I just brought my buddies down here and I'm on the lot, that's it. I said I was, actually I've already talked to the stunt coordinator and she's like, no, 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 you need to go upstairs. I'm like, no, I can't, I'm not, I wasn't asked to be down here. She's like, no, the director's upstairs, you should go upstairs. So I was like, all right, but I don't want to get in any trouble. And, um, you know, I kind of bummed my buddy out because I ended up going up and, you know, doing an improv with some other guys. And, you know, the one thing we were told not to do R and no I's. <laughs> so, you know, you had to just come up and improv and the couple of guys I, were, I was with, we were like, you know, pretending like we were like raped and pillaged this village and um, you know, we just went off the, the deep end and then uh, like I said, no, they're like, okay, you know, yeah. I'm like, oh crap. So, <laughs> but I had told my buddy, I'm like, look, I'm already out, gonna be on it on stunts. So, you know, get bad. If they only want one little guy, then it would have, they would have just went with, you know, with me anyway. So, so, uh, so, so you did your stunts on the all different films as well as your acting part. I always do all my own stunts. Yeah, that's it's awesome. Part of my part of my deals. I I don't want somebody. Well, there isn't anybody else that looks like me, mm-hmm. and I don't want somebody coming in and and doing my stuff and then not doing it the way I would do it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's part of whenever I'm on something. Yeah. So. <clears throat> So, since Pirates started, it's been what? It's been just what, over 10 years? No, no, no. Years? It's just 15. 15. 15 years. We started in 2002. Years. We started filming. Came out in 2003, so. so. So, over that period of time, from working on that film, from like the beginning to the most recent one, how much has really changed between the way you interact with your, your coworkers and stuff like that on the set with like Johnny Depp and, and everybody? It's, has, it, has it gone from being like. Well, you, scary you learn, first, uh, yeah, you totally, you end up learning. There's a lot of, you know, do's and don'ts on set, and you have to have couth. And, you know, a lot of people, they'll come on, and they get starstruck, and then they want to, you know, one thing you don't do is you don't walk up and, like, you know, start talking to the number one guy in the call sheet and trying to be all chummy and stuff. you got to let, you know, if, if they want to talk to you, they'll come and, you know, interact with you to let you know that they're, comfortable with you know but a lot of times they have uh, a lot going on like lines and and stuff in their head and they don't want you coming up and breaking character or trying to tell jokes and getting them out of their character so you know that's it's one of the things I notice a lot of people who are you know they come in new and they they try to chum up next to the guy and it's like you know just back up you know when he's and that's exactly what I did I kind of just was hanging back and to myself and there's a picture actually on my web on my Facebook where uh, it's Johnny and I both sitting on the on the railing of the uh, the Black Pearl and and, I, and I'm talking to him I've got my hands like this or something I'm I think I'm describing something but Johnny's just looking at me like you know but that was one of those things where I close your mouth there you go um, <laughs> he's like over here eating flies up. <laughs> You had some wine, eh? Or is that some grape juice? Uh, this is rum and coke. Rum and coke, nice. You're drinking wine. I'm drinking wine. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so yeah, so I just kind of like <laughs> let Johnny come up, and you know, I I didn't bother him like you know yeah. some of the other guys. Were. So so it was it was kind of like a prove to yourself, prove to the cast, and stuff like that, and then they all kind of just that's when they start opening up and everything like that. It just, well, it's not even a proving. It's just you know, you let them you know approach you, and if you you're calm and cool. Then you know they could. I mean, it's like coming to you know. I love coming to these, but you could tell like some people like, you know, you don't have a problem giving them your your email or your you know your contact. And then there's some people you're like, uh, yeah, you know, well, wait, like, like me, yeah, you know, one eight hundred five 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 one two one two, you know, eight six seven five three zero nine. There you go. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Who um, sang that? Toto? No. 
I don't know. I forget, actually. Who? Tommy Two-Tone. Tommy Two-Tone. Okay. So, all right, so after all this time on these sets, too, what, what can you, like, remember? Like, what, what's, like, one of your fondest memories of, like, being with the cast and stuff like that? Like, do you have any stories, anything funny that happened behind the scenes that you didn't see on film or anything funny that you could talk about? Well, Johnny's a, a big prankster, and um, one time I, uh, I put some sand and stuff down in his boot, you know, messing with it before our take. Now that's when, that's, you know, after being comfortable with them and he, mm-hmm. him being just one of the boys and, yeah. you know, you know what, locker room talks and for all those people who don't believe that boys are boys when they're all together and, you know, it does happen, and, you know, talk and we, I mean, I don't know what girls do, but whatever, but uh, I come, I went to go back to my trailer and um, it was a big dead, I, I, I walked in and I'm like, what is that stank? You know, and I'm like, ah. So I went to go to the use of the the John, and there was a big dead fish in my toilet. <laughs> and Johnny had had the uh, the um, caterers, you know, put a big dead fish in my thing, and it was that was Johnny's get, getting back at me. So, you know, there's pranksters and there's guys who are super serious and you know, okay. no bullshit. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've been on I've been on a few sets myself that are that are like that as well, which is it's it's really funny. What so, you work on? Uh, I do a lot of independent kind of stuff. One of the last films I did was a film called Tapestry with um, uh, Stephen Baldwin and Tian Louise. Oh, I love Stephen Baldwin. So it was uh, yeah, Stephen Baldwin. Stephen Baldwin, yes. I like him. No, it was it was it was a lot of fun actually, and I I did a lot of set decoration and coordinating for a flashback sequence for a Vietnam scene. So I did okay. I did costume stuff, uh, explosives, all that kind of stuff, and. And Did then you of guys course, have, like explosive guy on it, or no? no? Just, just kind of me. I just kind of like rig up, you know, just wow. s- make fireworks wind up looking like yeah, big yeah, time yeah, effects yeah. and stuff like that, and it winds up working out really well. We shot the entire thing inside of a horse barn. Actually, it was okay. it was fantastic. And uh, the final sequence that it came out of, it it looked like something you'd see on a regular war film on t- on screen and stuff like that. It was it was fantastic. It was great. It was extremely well shot. Um, and they're in post production now. They're hoping to push it out by the end of this year. So Good. we'll see what happens. Um, the last thing I have to ask you about real quick is I see all these badges on your on your jacket here and I know that you love motorcycles and pretty much any kind of like any kind of ride you can get into or get on and just do whatever with I'm a, I'm well I'm born and raised in Detroit so um, I'm a very American kind of guy as far as especially when it comes to cars so my stepdad worked for Ford so I only buy Ford because I can get, you know, at cost. Mm. So, because you can get a, you know, if you work for Ford or you have a family member. So, but I only buy Ford trucks, which is, you know, the, the weird thing. And my stepdad had um, passed away from uh, colon cancer. And, uh, but he was an original first owner of a 77 Corvette. So that's Chevy. And that's the only Chevy I would ever buy. But he gave it to me. Um, but naturally, I'm a Mopar man. I love Chrysler, Dodge, all the old Mopar cars and stuff like that. So if I could get a car now, it would be the new Demon Challenger with the 808 horsepower. But um, I was I was looking solid. at actually, I think, I think doesn't one of the okay. new Challengers actually has an all-wheel drive feature, doesn't it? Get out. I yeah, I think it does. Yeah, because I I remember I was looking at it actually to get rid of the car that I currently have. Uh, which is a Hyundai Veloster, which is like a little a what? A Hyundai Veloster. It's like uh, a little like. What the hell is that? It's a three door hatchback. Hyundai. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a little box you throw away. Oh, like throw it away. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's it was it was fun when I first got it, and then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, we get snow in New Jersey. This sucks. <laughs> yeah, New Jersey. <laughs> so you guys like, get the winter effect too. I mean, well. It's like Detroit; they get the lake effect. So yeah, I mean, where we live, we're closer towards the Poconos. Okay. So we get more of the mountain snow, mountain snow. and stuff like that, versus like, but we get we get the we're in between valleys where we live, so you get that really like slow moving air that kind of just yeah. drops down and it sits, and then it gets colder and colder and colder, and you get yeah. down to like I don't know minus five, and stuff like that. So it gets it gets pretty pretty cold. And then, you know, it's the snow will come down and they don't clear the roads fast enough, that just sucks. Nope. So it's like I need something with an all-wheel drive. And they get salt, right? On the roads. Yeah, they, they, the yeah, cars they, rust. yeah they do the salt, the, the cars rust, and then also too, if you're driving down the road and you happen to pass one and they flip it on and your car gets pelted, then you got dents and scratches and Ugh. it sucks, it's awful. I mean in, in Vermont they have the the liquid spray. 
Oh. So it's like a, it's like it's like a, it's like a brine. Okay. So they spray that down, and it um, it acts like the salt does, but it doesn't actually kick up or right, get stuck right, right, and right, stuff right. and and whatnot. It's, it's so brine. Brine. What is it? Is it like a brine? It's it's like a like you know like a pickle brine kind of thing. Oh okay. It's it's like a liquid solution of like oh, the, okay. the salt stuff in it, but it, it it sticks to the roads versus Benefit. flying up into your car and car. stuff, which is nice. <laughs> yeah, I got a window blown out this last weekend coming home from uh, the airport. Passing a semi, and all of a sudden, boom! Next to me, my whole side window. And if I wouldn't have had the black, black tint on it, holding all the glass together, you know, would have shattered shatter. it on me. But yeah, yeah so. one of one of our photographer friends actually, uh, who couldn't be here tonight right now, uh, she had a, a mishap not too long, or uh, about a week Wednesday. ago, Wednesday. She was driving down the road, and a, a large rock, she said about this big, got kicked up, came across. She ducked in her car, and it hit the windshield right on the driver's side, and it just shattered it in. And just a split rock. It away How across. does a big yeah. rock like that get kicked up? I don't know. I mean, it's it, we're we're in the middle of nowhere out here, so you've got logging well, trucks. She's also and, oh, it's like Rhode Final Island. Destination style out here. She's <laughs> in Rhode Island, and there's a lot of potholes out there. Oh. So man. you hit the pothole the right way, you can break more of it off, and it oh, just flies okay, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So oh, somebody in front of her out. probably hit the pothole yeah, the wrong way, and just hit the rock flying. It's bad. It gets bad at times. Yeah. There's <coughs> my my car. I've got like the low profile tires and stuff of like that. So anytime I hit something, we're driving up here, uh, <laughs> and it's just like everything I hit, it's like did a blow tire. Well, <laughs> no, I, I'm okay. Right on the vet, I have a. Um, I lowered it four inches front and rear, and then I went from the 15 inch rims to the 17 inch rims with a lower profile tire. So literally, when if there's anywhere that has a. Um, a steep driveway or a, a speed bumps, I've got to go one wheel at a time and still take take it super slow because my you, you exhaust. Gotta, <laughs> you got you got to come in like at yep. an angle. At an angle, one at a yeah, time. Yeah, there's yeah. plenty of those places over by me too. I, I mess up the front of my, my car as well and the, and the rear as well. Um, so the, the the motorcycles I've seen the pictures online that you have with um, with Johnny, Johnny and stuff yeah. like that. It's I have like, that custom built. Um, 2004 or five, and um, by the time two, by the time we started doing two and three, I had already had it built, and then I just was like, yeah, uh, I asked Johnny's permission first, you know, hey, is it okay if I, you know, I want to have your image put on my bike uh, from Pirates because I'm doing, um, you know, the bike's gonna be called the Black Pearl, and he's like, oh yeah, yeah, man, I want to see it when you do get it done, so I was like, all right, so I brought the gas tank in. And uh, he's like, oh, man, you want me to sign it? And I'm like, dude, you know, by all means. But I said, I got to take it home first and have it wet sanded so then you could sign it and then I can clear it and polish it and all that stuff. And now I'm afraid to ride the bike because who else in the world's got a chopper signed by Audra <laughs> by Johnny Depp? No one. That's awesome. So, yeah, it's eight feet long. It's got a 52-degree rake. And this is all for a guy who's never rode a motorcycle before. So... I went and got my license now, and now I'm just, uh, again, I'm afraid to, to, to drive it, ride it. <laughs> just sits in the garage and just It does. It doesn't it. even sit in my garage. It sits in my neighbor's a couple doors down because he doesn't even stay there. His garage is completely empty. So, so it's, it's like, by itself. Yeah, it's just by itself in a bubble. I have one of those car bubbles that are made for motorcycles. That, so it basically looks like a snow globe. <laughs> so I clean it up, I put it away, I zip it. She gets some confetti in there and takes yeah, some photos. I should. I should. <laughs> you should. You should get like one of the things that they do to test like uh, road surfaces and just put it inside of the shakes it all up yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you? Do you have any plans going on currently for the future for film and stuff like that? Do you? Do you have any like current projects you're working on that you want to pitch or anything? Well, we just signed uh, Pirates Six and Seven. I'm lying. Just joking. <laughs> um, no, I, I have a film coming out. It was a Russian Chinese uh, um, collaboration and stars. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Jackie Chan, Rutger Howard, Charles Dance, Jason Fleming, and myself, and then a whole bunch of Russian and Chinese people. Uh, I speak English. I think Arnold probably speaks English. <laughs> Everybody else speaks their native language, and um, so you're the ones that get dubbed. <laughs> yeah, it's it's called uh, Mystery of the Dragon: The Journey to China, and it's a sequel to V V I Y, um, and it's about a a 17th century cartographer, somebody who draws, you know, mm -hmm. maps, from, you know, whatever. So, um, and it's supposed to come out the beginning of this upcoming year. It'll be a 3D, and then 
hopefully uh, I'm supposed to talk to them in the next day or so, and they're talking about doing two two more. I think one is going to be going to India, so uh, maybe going to Bollywood and nice. filming there. I don't know what I'm going to eat because I'm like lots and lots of toilet paper. Yeah. The, Consume that first. Maybe it'll clean everything on the way out. That's there. right. I need some uh, Charmin for sure. I'm not using no leaves. Just bring your own ramen. Bring some ramen with you. I can't eat noodles, Mom. My wife's got me on an Atkins diet, so oh, man. I gotta lose uh, ten pounds. So. Oh man! All right. Well, that would t- that would that would be it for today. Actually, cool. on on another podcast here at Kineticon. Thank you. I really much. appreciate having you here. No it was, it was thank great you talking to you. Thank you. And uh, stick around. We'll have more later on.